Hello and welcome to the next video which I'd like to demonstrate uh, after installation. The next thing after installation is internet security. So let's click on that and we go to internet security. I just want to make a note that the internet in the beginning was not designed to be secure. It was designed to make sure it had no single point of failure. So security on the internet is always your responsibility. So there I mentioned that securing the internet and securing your server then is your responsibility on the internet. Okay, so this video will cover step one and I'll do another video for step two for the secure connections. So the first thing we want to secure is the server itself with its local firewall. So let's click on that. Okay, um, <coughs> The server uses what we call IP tables um, to secure the, the network port. But the Ubuntu community created what they call the uncomplicated firewall um, to help uh, set up the firewall. And there are guides there uh, on the server installation. Um, you can have a look at the security. Okay, so the first thing we do is we log into the server. So let's do that. Let's log into the server as usual, uh, and then with Ubuntu, I just want to make sure this stays on top all the time. So let's log into our development server to see how this works. In this password. Okay. Um, the first thing we've got to do is install that uncomplicated firewall software. So we copy and paste that in there. Paste that in. Password again. Okay, it tells us that this firewall is already the latest version and then some administration that we need to do can be done later. But the firewall is installed. And then to see the status of the firewall, we just cut and copy and paste that in to see what it says so far. It's inactive, so the firewall has not been enabled on our development server. So let's do that. Always good practice. Okay, let's try and enable that firewall. Okay, all the firewall rules are kept in that folder. If we have a look there, ls slash l for slash etc ufw. You can see there, there are these all the files and everything, but we don't change anything in there. That's just for information, okay? And if you want to know how to use the UFW command, you just type man UFW on the command line like that, and there's all the help about how to use UFW. And we call what we call in the Unix Linux world a man page. And then to quit that, we just type Q to quit it. Or another way to find help for UFW is to um, say UFW-H, let's paste that in for the whole, and there uh, there's some sort of very condensed command like that. Okay. And the user rules are kept in that folder, so let's have a look at that. If we have permission to look at it. Uh, okay, we haven't created any rules, so there's nothing to keep in there. So let's start creating some new firewall rules. The first one we want to do is allow uh, SSH. So you can copy and paste this in, and you can type the port number, or you can type the service. Let's try the service. So we say allow SSH, and there it is done. Again, here we want to do, uh, I'm just going to press the arrow up quickly. You can put in the port number or the service. So here we say we want HTTP. And we want secure HTTP as well, HTTPS. Uh, and we want to allow for the handle server port 2641. And for the virus scanner, if we use it, 3310. And then the other port for the handle server, oops, sorry, 8000 there. And then we can enable the firewall. Uh, remember, if you logged in remotely, it might complain, like it will now, it should do it. And they say, might, the command here may disrupt existing SSH connections. Proceed. So, yes, 
I'm fairly confident it will work. Now we open port 22, there we go, you see it's working port 22. And then if we want to see the status, uh, let's have a look how far we're going, how far, what it looks like, and there are the firewall rules now. Uh, let's give you, let's make this a bit bigger, there are all the firewall rules we created. Okay, now uh, I see I've done some duplicates, but that's basically the idea, okay, the firewall rules. Now for internal access, it's a good idea to set up firewall rules for internal access for um, the mail server. There's also access there, we want to do the LDAP server for authentication, user authentication, we want a rule for that to allow it. Uh, the secure LDAP, we also want to allow that. And then this is a special rule that we want to allow when we do our rsync. So we only want to allow the backup server to attach to our rsync port. Very important rule there for security. If you're using the Oracle database, we want to allow that port. So let's allow, paste it in. Uh, if we're using a proxy server, script proxy server, uh, for some content, we want to allow that port. Uh, if we're using, if we're monitoring the server via Nagios, uh, we can use that command. Uh, if we're monitoring the server via Moonin, we need to allow the Moonin agent to come in and grab the Moonin, uh, Moonin data. Uh, we need to allow the Postgres server to connect, of course, very important. Uh, Postgres server. Uh, not really required, but you can put it in. So if we go back to see the status again, we should see all the firewall rules uh, that are now enabled. Come through. There they go. There's all the firewalls. Okay. But for now, I am going to disable uh, the firewall uh, because on my development server, it's not too critical. But this is very critical if your server goes out onto the web. Okay. It's open on a firewall to the web. So please, um, please speak to your campus network administrator. Demonstrate to him or her um, that you've done this on the local firewall, on, on the local machine, on the local server, uh, so that they have a, a better understanding of what your server, uh, uh, your server security is. Okay, it's a small page, but a very important page. I'm just going to close that terminal there. Um, setting up the firewall. Um, the next step is the secure connections, but that is a fairly long procedure, there's many steps, and I will do another video for that, so that we don't get too lost uh, doing um, internet security on the server. Okay. Just to recap, we're doing step one, and the next video will be step two, and then uh, if you want, uh, there's some more, um, there's a free PDF to, to download and check more about Linux security and uh, just to uh, round out your knowledge about it and uh, just have a look there. You can see it's fairly comprehensive about uh, security. So I suggest download it uh, and put it somewhere and refer to it. Okay, it's got security for all the uh, common uh, services that Linux provides. Okay, thank you very much and that concludes this video. Thank you.